Hello biologists, this is Miss R. And we're gonna talk about two things in lab 3.06. Mitosis and meiosis. In this program, we're gonna look at mitosis versus meiosis and then compare. And then we're gonna talk about sexual and asexual reproduction and the energy costs for each of those. By, um, we're gonna pretend we're three different types of lizards. First, we're gonna to go to the program that looks at mitosis and meiosis. And you can see these tabs here will show us the two different forms of cell division. Mitosis is used for body cells and it has fewer phases here. You'll see the phases kind of click by as the cell up here goes through them or the real cell down here goes through them. Here's meiosis. You can see it has more phases that's going to go through more things and turn into more cells. Meiosis is just for creating sex cells, that's eggs and sperm. So ladies, you'll never do meiosis. You were born with all of your eggs. You'll never need to do meiosis. Guys, you're going to keep doing meiosis for quite some time. Finally, we'll get to the compare tab and we'll look at the differences in these phases and we can look at mitosis and meiosis happen at the same time. So let's go to this program. So let's read a little bit about cell division. Parent cells that undergo mitosis produce two identical daughter cells. Mitosis is just for reproducing all the regular cells in your body, like your nose cells and your ear cells and your toe cells and your finger cells that um, kind of wear out and need to be replaced on almost a daily basis different cells in your body. Not every cell needs to replace every day, but on a daily basis, your body is replacing different cells in your body. This occurs in humans and other multicellular organisms producing new cells. It's also how many other single cell organisms asexually reproduce. Asexually reproducing organisms don't need to make eggs and sperm, they just clone themselves. And their um, offspring are exactly the same, which, um, is kind of boring, but is great because it's quick and easy. In organisms that reproduce sexually, um, like most animals, meiosis produces sex cells, that's eggs and sperm, with half the number of chromosomes found in other cells. That's because an egg cell and a sperm cell get together and then they have the right number. You'll see animations of these processes along with movies of actual cells um, on the next pages. Let's watch mitosis happen here. You can see the interphase has already gone by. And the chromosomes here are moving around. And let's see what happens to those chromosomes. You can see here in the real cell what's going on as well. You can see that all the chromosomes, they line up kind of single file here on the, what's called the equator of the cell, just like the equator of the earth. You can see down here the same thing is happening. All these chromosomes are lining up. And this is called metaphase or the middle phase. So you can see this is the phase we're on right here. We're gonna go to anaphase next. The chromosomes will go to the, each side of the cell. And you'll see like if this is chromosome number one, this side has two copies of number one and two copies of number two. Before it had four, now it has two. It's back to having the right number. The cell had to copy all of its DNA, all of its chromosomes, before it divided. And now it's divided that back up and it's back to just having two copies in each cell. Cytokinesis is where it splits and then the cell goes back into something called interphase where it kind of rests for a while and it might get ready to divide again. So now let's go to meiosis. Remember, meiosis is just for making sex cells. Your normal body cells don't go through meiosis. So let's watch these phases here. Let's see how many phases there are. You can see it says prophase one now, not just prophase. That's because meiosis has more phases. It's more complicated. And look, 
these chromosomes kind of swapped some genes here. That's called crossover, and that make, helps make genetically unique organisms. That's an important part of the advantages of sexual reproduction or making eggs and sperm. And look at how they line up here. There's two of them together. So if this is two copies of chromosome one, there's actually one, two, three, four copies of chromosome number one and chromosome number two. And they've kind of switched some of their genetic material. If this is the chromosome you got from your dad and this is the chromosome you got from your mom, you've kind of mixed up your mom's and dad's chromosomes. And here's telophase one. Notice these are kind of still stuck the, together. So they're still an X. And when it divides the first time here in cytokinesis, it still has an X and an X. That's different from mitosis. It just had a line and a line. Because this still has two copies. And it's going to go down to one copy here. Now it's going to divide again. Because we have to get down to only one copy of each chromosome in eggs and cells because when they combine they're going to take one in the egg, one in the sperm, and put it together so they can have two copies. Because you get one chromosome from your dad and one chromosome from your mom. And so you have two copies of each chromosome. So you can see that the two cells that already divided are dividing again. and we're in telophase two. Notice there are more phases and some of the phases are labeled one and some of the phases are labeled two. So here's one copy of chromosome one and here's one copy of chromosome two. One copy of chromosome one, co one copy of chromosome two. And you can see kind of, they got a little bit mixed up. The, mom did, chrom the chromosome you got from your mom and the chromosome you got from your dad kind of switched over some genes to make totally new chromosomes, which is really cool. Hello, we're gonna look at now the difference between mitosis and meiosis and we're gonna compare. Um, we're going to find cells that divide by meiosis only in your reproductive system. Now we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. And we're going to look at one gene as it's highlighted in yellow on one of the blue chromosomes. And as the phases change, the gene will be shown with a spotlight. Track what happens to that yellow gene in the spotlight um, after a cell undergoes mitosis and after a cell undergoes meiosis. Remember, we're comparing mitosis, which is made, used for making body cells, with meiosis, which is used for making sex cells. That's eggs and sperm. So let's watch it happen. Here's our one chromosome that we're looking at. This is prophase and prophase 1 in meiosis. It kind of looks a little bit the same. Um, but you can see that crossover has occurred here in meiosis that mixes up the two different chromosomes, the one you got from mom and the one you got from dad. You can see that they line up on the equator a little bit differently. This lines up as pairs, pairs with pairs, kind of like a double date. This is more like elementary school. Here's that chromosome still. You can see this is broken down. It's got two copies of chromosome number one and two copies of chromosome number two. And so it's set to go, it's set to be another cell. Meiosis is still going here. It's got to divide again so it gets down to one copy of each chromosome. Because you only want eggs and sperm to have one copy, so when they get together, the cell that happens when they get together, eggs and sperm get to make one cell. The sperm basically injects its DNA into the egg they each only have one copy. You can see here's one copy of one, here's one copy of two. This one's got four, this one's only got two.
And that's good because let's say this was an egg cell and this was a sperm cell, which wouldn't happen in one single organism. But when they got together, they would look again kind of like this one. Okay, let's do some comparison between what we saw in mitosis and meiosis. Did the chromosomes light up the equator? Yes. For both of them, they both lined up at the equator and got kind of pulled apart. How many phases were there all together? Well, let's go to the next slide, slide to look. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven phases in mitosis. Remember, that's just for making good old regular body cells. And meiosis has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So this is seven, mitosis is seven, it's simpler, and meiosis to make sex cells is 12. So here's seven, that's what your cells do every day, it's pretty simple. Does crossover occur? No, you get exactly the same chromosomes when you copy your cells on an everyday basis. But when you make sex cells, you do cross over the chromosome you got from dad and the chromosome you got from mom, they kind of mix up their genes and you get new chromosomes. How many cells are produced? We saw two in mitosis and four in meiosis. Are the cells same as the parent? Yes, in mitosis you produce exact copies. In meiosis, no, you make genetically unique cells because you mix up those chromosomes and you get new gene combinations. Mitosis doesn't make sex cells. Your cells are doing it right now. Meiosis, yes, makes eggs and sperm. For humans, ladies, you've already done all your meiosis before you were born. Guys, as long as you're making sperm, you're doing meiosis. Um, you can see the comparisons again. Um, let's do kind of a compare contrast like you may have do in your English class. Um, here's a Venn diagram. This is only mitosis. This is only meiosis. And this is both. We're going to represent both here in the middle. We're going to represent only mitosis over here and only meiosis over here. I've already filled in some of these things that we've already talked about. Mitosis makes body cells. Meiosis doesn't. It only makes sex cells like eggs and sperm. Both make new cells. Mitosis goes from two copies in your everyday regular old nose cells, has two copies of each chromosome. When your uh, nose cell gets ready to divide, it makes four copies of each chromosome, and then it divides and goes back to two. Meiosis, on the other hand, that happens in your reproductive organs, Starts with two, goes to four, goes down to two, and then goes to only one. Both In both mitosis and meiosis, your chromosomes have to get copied before the cells divide. In mitosis, you're producing a cell that's exactly the same as the parent cell. They're both made from parent cells, but in meiosis, you end up with something that's genetically different from the parent. Um, this, we found out, has fewer steps. Mitosis is fewer steps, and it's simpler, which is great if you're an organism that's simple like bacteria, and you just want to make a ton more copies of yourself really quickly, doing mitosis over and over again is a very good strategy for you. Both have multi not multiple steps. This is more steps, and so it's more complicated, and it takes more time. And your cell has to have a little bit more complicated machinery to do meiosis. So let's think about, um, as we go on to lizards, lizards are special because there's one kind of lizard that can produce asexually. A lizard's eggs are formed by meiosis, and when they make new cells, mitosis comes into play. When the egg and sperm join, that's one cell. And to make more lizard cells out of that embryonic lizard, you got to do mitosis. So the 
asexual lizard, uh, female lizard, doesn't need a partner. And so she might be saving. Okay, it's time to do the second half of lab 3.06, where we're going to talk about sexual and asexual reproduction. We're going to play a game with lizards. And lizards have this unique feature that um, female lizards, some female lizards in the Sonoran Desert, called whiptail lizards, can reproduce asexually. They just copy themselves and that's it. Um, they don't need to find a male and do sexual reproduction. They also have the option of doing sexual reproduction. So we're going to look at the energy inputs in doing asexual reproduction, sexual reproduction for both males and females. And we're going to see that there's probably some pretty big differences. Um, the energy inputs we're going to look at are crickets. These lizards are going to eat crickets. They require energy for um, different things. We all require energy for staying alive. We need energy to breathe. We need energy for our heart to beat and our eyes to blink. That's called basal metabolic rate. We need um, energy for producing waste, digestion, and for shedding. We shed our skin. We don't shed our whole skin at once like a lizard does or a snake. But we're always shedding skin cells. That's what the most of the dust in your house is. It's about 90% of your skin cells. And activity. We run around, um, or if the lizards, in this case, they run around looking for crickets, that requires energy too. Any leftover energy they have is for growth, getting bigger, or maybe um, storing some fat, or for reproduction. So let's go play this lizard game and see how things go. So we're going to use, look at what kind of energy gets used to do different tasks. We're going to quickly show, look at how to play. So just to go over briefly, the introduction of the game talks about what you need for energy. You have breakfast every morning, so you can do the things that you need to do. Study for school, maybe wink at the cute girl next to you um, if you go to brick and mortar school or um, run around and help take care of your brothers and sisters. Thermodynamics, that's how energy gets used, has two basic rules. One, energy can't be created or destroyed. It just changes forms. So even though you feel drained at the end of the day and like you have no energy, you've used the energy you had for breakfast in the form of food and it's changed form from chemical energy into mechanical energy, you moving around, and maybe that mechanical energy has been changed into heat energy. And though the energy has left your body, it's still out there in the universe. It's just changed forms. It hasn't disappeared. And as you know, in cleaning your room, a system will trend toward more disorder unless it receives energy to keep it orderly. Unless you work to keep something clean and tidy, it's going to get messy and crazy. And that's the same thing with organisms. If we don't have enough energy, our bodies kind of uh, get run down. And if we don't take care of ourselves and kind of give, our, give energy to um, resting and time to uh, reconstruct some of the things that may have gone wrong, like we do every night when we go to sleep, we can serve energy for repair. So here are those energy inputs we talked about, the required energy outputs, and the leftover energy. So here's how to play. Stay alive, reproduce before the breeding season ends, and for sexual females only, select the best mate. I'll show you how it works. So asexual females, life's pretty easy. They don't have to find a mate. They don't have to impress everyone. They just have to find some crickets, have enough energy to mate, life is good so they're gonna go she's gonna go eat a cricket we'll go over here eat some crickets when she has enough crickets she can produce enough eggs when you've eaten enough eaten enough crickets she has enough energy And now she can reproduce. Done. In 33 seconds, total of seven crickets, 
Um, we used about 310 calories to reproduce, total calories 412. We'll compare the asexual female with the sexual female and the sexual male. Let's go be a sexual female lizard where we have to find a partner and that's going to be a little bit more complicated. You can see the guys are trying to line up and show off. So she's going to still need to eat crickets and produce eggs, but this time she's also going to have to find a partner and reproduce with that partner. So it might take a little bit longer to be successful at this game. We'll produce some eggs here because we had enough calories. It won't light up until you have enough calories. See, I can't uh, reproduce yet because I don't have enough extra calories. Remember we talked about you need enough calories just to kind of run around, do your daily thing. And you can't reproduce until you have enough extra calories. Let's go check out one of these guys here. All right, she thinks he's good enough. Done. So we needed to eat 11 crickets this time. Um, it took a little bit more energy because we had to find a guy and pick out a guy that was, you know, we thought was okay, had good genes. And we had a bunch of leftover calories even. So let's go be a male. Males have it a little bit harder because they have to impress a female. So they're going to burn a few more calories and probably need to eat a few more crickets. You can see that they have some more jobs to do. They have to produce sperm. They're going to have to end up doing a bunch of push-ups, a bunch of territorial displays to scare off the other males, and they still have to reproduce with the female. So don't have to do any push-ups yet. You don't want to waste energy. There's no females around, nobody to impress, or nobody to, to um, territorially threaten. Notice that the female gets bored, she just like reads her book. So if you want to go impress her, go do some push-ups. produce some sperm so when we're ready. Let's go over to this guy. Oop, let's do a territorial display and scare off the other guys. Let's do a couple more push-ups and a territorial display. Maybe a couple more push-ups. Maybe a couple more push-ups. Maybe better do a territorial display and scare the other guy off. Oh, I'm burning more calories than I have. Oops. Am I gonna make it? Come down and do some push-ups and see if we can impress her. Get those guys out of the way. Let's go. Let's go over to the female and do some more push-ups and see if we can get her to like us. Oh, I might die before mating season. Let's go over and do some push-ups. Oh, no, 
it's hard being a male. Well, I've already done this and been successful. So you can see how hard it is. You got to run around. You've got lots of other energy costs. Um, so you're welcome to play this game yourself. I'll put the URL in the um, box on the YouTube. Um, let's look at our results overall here. The asexual female ate eight crickets. She used about 310 calories to reproduce and she had eight left over, but that all happened just in 40 seconds. So it's pretty easy if you're an asexual female. Here, sexual female took about the same time, ate 11 crickets. This is Mrs. Strombeck and I playing against each other. Um, they use the asexual, the sexual female used a little bit more energy here. She used about 350 calories because she had to find a mate and reproduce. Um, but still had 39 calories left over. Total calories wasn't much different. 462 versus 581. When we go to the male here, you can see there's more calories. Um, the male here used 947 calories because then it needed to do more territorial displays and more push-ups. This guy must have not been quite as impressive as the other guy. So here are the total costs for reproduction put together in one table. You can see that the asexual female used 310 calories. The sexual female used a little bit more, but the guy had to go all out and do all those push-ups and territorial displays and needed a bunch more energy. You can see the guy ate 20 crickets versus the females ate eight and 11. So being a guy lizard and trying to sexually re reproduce, which is your only choice if you're a guy, um, is a pretty tough, um, tough option. And sexual reproduction in general um, uses more calories. It's more complicated. You go to do meiosis. You got to get eggs and sperm. Um, that's extra work for your body. Then you have to find a partner. That can be really a lot of extra work if you're a guy and have to impress the females. Um, as we can see here with our um, males who sexually reproducing. So sexual reproduction can be complicated, but it's great because you get unique individuals. Finding a uh, two individuals who have different sex cells and getting them to come together gets two different ge genetics from two different organisms together and makes unique organisms that might be better adapted for the environment. So it's a good strategy overall, but it does take more calories. So let's recap a few things here um, at the end of this lab. Mitosis and meiosis are different. Meiosis makes sex cells, eggs and sperm, and it takes a little bit more work to do meiosis because it's a little bit more complicated. It has more stages. And it's only used for reproduction. So ladies, you will never do meiosis again. You did it all before you were born because you were born with your eggs. All your eggs are your eggs, and you never will make any more, so take good care of them. Guys, you make more sperm, um, and you do meiosis to do that. Mitosis makes body cells, on the other hand. Um, or once you've got the egg and sperm combined, and you've got that one cell that's an embryo, you make more embryo by doing mitosis. Or you make more nose cells, or more skin cells, or more finger cells, or more ear cells on a daily basis, because you need to replace them. Let's look at sexual reproduction versus asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction uses more energy, but the offspring are genetically unique. So there's a payoff. You use more energy, you have to go through all the bother of finding a mate and making eggs and sperm and going through meiosis, but you get genetically unique offspring. Asexual reproduction like bacteria use, or one kind of lizard, uses less energy, but it produces an offspring exactly like the parents, 
And if you're not well adapted to the environment, your offspring aren't going to be 